My first exposure to this type of 3D printing was I, I went into a uh, sneaker shop and they can sort of mold your foot and I guess, you know, give you this kind of great fitting shoe. And it was a pretty good experience, but you can actually use this stuff now for, I guess, more sophisticated type of manufacturing. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. Polymeric products, which is a key grouping of materials. You got steel, you got metals, uh, polymers, ceramics. Uh, polymers are molded and uh, in injection molding tools typically. Molding was invented 7,000 years ago and uh, the first polymers were molded in 1827. And so what's really interesting is everything we make today for that you see polymeric is cast in, in molds. We make it digitally with light. And so that really opens up you know, making complicated things very easily uh, with geometries that are unmoldable and it also alleviates where you make things uh, because you can design all over the place and fabricate directly. So this is the key thing and why the timing is relevant because obviously with, in a time of ri rising tariffs, that makes it unattractive uh, to have products crisscross the border several times. The clients that you work with, how much are they seriously looking at 3D printing as a solution for reducing the complexity of their supply chains? Yeah, you know, what's really interesting is, you know, when you introduce products, uh, it takes a long time to identify these tools, get those tools made up, being able to make what's next now yeah. really speeds up product teams and allows them to introduce products very quickly. You know, Thomas Friedman talked about at any given time, 2% of the world's GDP is in a UPS truck or is in transport. The idea of being able to, uh, to make where you need it, local for local production, really opens up uh, some neat opportunities. So no need to be going to Vietnam, perhaps, or South Korea. Instead, make it at home with 3D printing. Have you in any way your own business been exposed to hmm. concerns of trade tariffs or, or even have your customers affected by it? How, how have you been dealing with it? Have any of your products been coming from abroad that you're worried about? Well, certainly, you know, as you look through in, in uh, precious metals and different things and components of electronics, you know, we have to go through and you know, make sure that our, our supply chains hmm. are also uh, uh, established. The chemical supply chain for the resins that we use is really important to make sure that we have access globally. We're in 14 different countries now mm. with our technology. Uh, and so it's a key part, not only for our own equipment and our customers, but you think about you know where they produce uh, and being able to do that uh, locally. And, and you know, I don't even know what it means with tariffs when you're able to produce different products in different countries because you design them in one country and you can produce locally. What about competition for you? I mean, you make a great, I think, product or offer a great service, but we've also seen some kind of big companies like GE, Honeywell, try to sort of do this on their own with varying degrees of success. So uh, we published a paper uh, in Science in 2015 where we basically cracked the code on, on how to make polymers, uh, polymeric products very quickly mm -hmm. uh, out of finished goods. And so in other words, we have the first example and last year with Adidas that is the largest single example of a finished product made in a 3D printer in history and that was last year hmm. and we're going to do 10 times that volume this year but it's not just running shoes you talk about helmets with Riddell uh, we've got products in biotech we have a bioabsorbable material in partnership with J&J &J. so products that are implanted in the body and then after several months goes away without a trace and we have a new program with affordable care uh, which is uh, part of affordable dentures you know, making dentures hasn't changed in over 120 years. Uh, and it's a very artisanal process made by, you know, people making these products. Now we can go to digital scanning technologies, just like in, uh, Invisalign, scan your mouth, just like Riddell scanning heads for perfectly fitted helmets, but these are perfectly fitted dentures, one chair side visit instead of eight chair side visits mm -hmm. with a perfectly fitted denture. And if you lose them, you just order a four pack. You know, you don't have to go back in that chair eight times. So it really opens up. Do people up. lose their dentures? <laughs> I've heard so. I, I've heard so many places. You know, people in the oh. old folks' home, and one lady sense. threw them in the fireplace by mistake. So dog in the them. fireplace. <laughs> she had it in the newspaper. You hear so many stories with customers. So, so obviously, three D printing as an exciting technology. People have been talking about it for a while. I've pr I don't know. I probably first heard of it seven or eight years ago. Something like 30 that. Thirty years ago. How big, you know, compared to when it first entered the mainstream consciousness, what can you do today that even, say, a few years ago yeah. was sort of beyond, uh, you know, at the bleeding edge? So 3D printing as an industry today yeah. uh, is an $8 billion marketplace. Half of that's polymers, half of it's metals. That includes the hardware, the software, the materials. We're playing in manufacturing. That's a $330 billion market for injection molding. 3D printing up to this point has not crossed the chasm into manufacturing. Hmm. Our Why not? 
because of technology, because of technological issues. It was printing too slow. The materials did not have the properties to be a finished good. It was mm -hmm. prototyping. It was trinkets for the most part. We've figured this out. We print really fast. We have durable materials using a light-based printer. They're finished goods. And so that's why it's all, this whole new category of product realization is really what we're doing. It's going to be all defined by the killer apps. Think about Riddell. Think about Adidas. Mm -hmm. Think about J&J. &J, think about affordable dentures. Those kind of applications. We had the very first printed parts on a production vehicle out of Detroit. As exciting and as, as long as 3D printing has been around, no one's had 3D printed parts on production vehicles out of Detroit. At the Detroit Auto Show in January. When you say parts, you're talking about internal parts of the car? Yeah, so the Ford Mustang, the F-150 truck, uh, Ford announced in January at the Detroit Auto Show the very first 3D printed parts on production vehicles out of Detroit. Now we have new parts for electrical connectors. So electrical connectors, you know, 90% of the warranty issues in automobiles are electrical. Hmm and 90% of those are due to the electrical connector. We now have materials that have the durability to be a, a, a great electrical connector, and now you have designs that are unmoldable. So now you can have retraction forces and connectors that are twice as strong as it's possible from a molded product. Mm -hmm. That's a $60 billion market. That's just electrical connectors. And so what I'm saying is what Carbon has done, crack the code on how to make po finished polymeric products with designs that are unmakeable, making mm -hmm. the unmakeable, with materials that have the properties to be a finished good that takes 3D printing from a modest $8 billion marketplace to a $300 billion juggernaut. And once you start doing that, now you start thinking about replacement parts. One of the Ford parts yeah. that we had was a replacement part for the uh, Ford, Fo uh, Ford Focus. Think about a warehouse in a cloud now. Now that you've actually cracked the code and make finished goods, the ability of having replacing inventory, eliminating inventory, not having storage buildings with parts stored for decades, yeah. and all the tied up capital, we can have on-demand inventory in a warehouse in a cloud, and that's ultimately where we're going. Thank